December is always my best month. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Mary's Corner. It's Emily here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys all the books I read in December. This December, I read 14 books, which is really good for me, especially since in 2020, the year was a bit crazy and I had one of the biggest reading slumps I've ever had. So I'm really excited to share all of these books with you. In the beginning of December, I joined the Disney Channel Games Readathon where I read eight books, and the first book I read was The Program by Suzanne Young. I felt like this book was very average. This follows a girl named Sloane who lives in a utopian world where if you are depressed or have suicidal thoughts, you get sent to the program and they wipe you of all your depression. But not only do they wipe you of your depression, but they wipe you of all your life or all that you knew beforehand. This book was told in three distinctive parts and honestly, I felt very different about each one. The first part was my absolute favorite. It was very immersive and descriptive. And I think this is the part where if you get triggered very easily by depression and suicide, do not read this book because it was very descriptive. Um, but the second part, I felt like it was kind of boring and dragged and was very frustrating. And the third part, after she was out of the program, I found it very interesting to see how she interacted with all of her friends that she knew from before. Overall, I gave this book a three out of five stars. I don't think I will read the rest of the series, but it was a cool and interesting book to read. The next book I read was The Distance Between Us by Casey West. This is a reread and I've read this countless of times. I love it so much. This follows a poor girl and a rich guy and both parents expect them to take over the family business and they both don't want to. So they go on a series of field days, I guess you can call them, to see which career would suit them best. It is so cute. YA romances, they're just, it's a build up to a kiss and Compared to adult romances where they're already having sex and that's a build up to see if like they actually want to be together. It's just so cute and cheesy and just all I wanted. <laughs> so I'm really, really happy. I, I said I, I'm really, really happy that I read this book and I, of course, I gave it a five out of five stars. The third book I read was The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is the second book in the Folk of the Air series. I believe that's what it's called. The first book was The Cruel Prince. And of course, I can't really tell you what this is about because that would be a spoiler. But the first book follows a girl named Jude and her two sisters who their parents were killed by a fairy. And so the fairy that killed the mom and the dad took them back to the land fairy. <laughs> I don't know. Every single time I talk about the synopsis, it always cracks me up. Um, and so the main character, Jude, wants to be a part of the fairy courts. However, However, all fairies despise humans. So I did not like the book, first book that much. I gave it a three out of five stars. This book, I liked it a little bit better. Um, but this book, I think a lot of people like it because of the political intrigue and the political aspect. But that is not my favorite part of fantasy books. I kind of hate that part. So since that's what it basically, that's the whole point of this book, I don't enjoy it as much as I would other fantasy books. I do love Holly Black's endings. They are so good. And like this book, I was like, okay, maybe it would be on par with the first book, but then the ending hit and I was like, okay, for sure. So in the end, I gave this book a four out of five stars and I bought the last book in the series to read very, very soon. Now for the most disappointing read of this month, it is Ice Like Fire by Sarah Roche. This is the second book in a series. It might be a trilogy. Um, the first one was Snow Like Ashes and it follows eight kingdoms, Four are rhythms where basically they experience all the seasons and then the other four are individual seasons like winter, spring, summer. Um, and in the first book, winter was destroyed and it follows the survivors trying to get it back. I loved that book. I gave it a three stars. It was very fast and fun and very enjoyable. So I bought the second book expecting the same thing and I was very let down. As I said with The Wicked King, I don't like the political aspects of books all that much. And that was all this book was. It was very, very political and it was so freaking repetitive. And especially since this book is thicker than the first one, I just, I just expected so much more and I didn't get it. I did not get what I wanted at all. So I gave that book a two star. Now on to one of my favorite books of the month, Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. I absolutely adored this book. This follows the daughter of the Pirate King, Alosa, and she is on a mission to retrieve a hidden 
treasure map I guess to an island that is full of gold and sirens but the only thing that is keeping her away from that is a ruthless pirate crew and on that crew is a guy named Raiden who we love um it was so freaking good I absolutely adored it it isn't really complex it's very very simple but there's a lot of action and there's a lot of romance and I absolutely love this in the end I think I gave it a four out of five stars or 4.5 out of five stars it was really really good but there was something missing so later on in the month when I read Daughter of the Siren Queen this gave me everything the first book was missing the first book didn't have a complex plot but this one had such a good plot line had a lot of action a lot of romance and since this is the last book since it is a duology you get a sense of satisfaction and completion it was so freaking good i gave this book a five out of five stars the only thing i do want to talk about this book is i don't know if there's a lot of diversity in this i don't I didn't realize, I mean, the main character is a ginger. Wow, that's, I don't know. I didn't see a lot of people with different colored skin. Uh, there were a couple of gay people in here, but one got killed off right away and the second one, it wasn't completely labeled. So, I don't know. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to make excuses for that, but there is no excuses. I just really, really loved it. And if you can get farther than, like, if you can excuse that, then I think you will absolutely enjoy this book. The next book I read was Shatter Me by Tahita Mafi. This was a reread, of course, if you have never seen my channel. This series is one of my favorite series of all time. Tahita Mafi is my favorite author of all time. I love her so freaking much. This follows a girl named Juliet and her touch is lethal. One day a boy, little boy, fell and she tried to pick him up and help him, but she killed him. So her parents put her into an insane asylum and it follows her adventure and there is definitely some romance in here especially a love triangle and I loved it so much <laughs> I love this book so much and I understand that this book is filled with a lot of flaws I know that a lot of people don't like Tahara Mafi's writing in this book because this is Juliet's diary essentially and she is very very crazy being in an insane asylum for seven years it's very damaging um she's very insecure some of her how she like decisions that was not a word that was not a sentence <laughs> Some of her decisions were kind of irrational and you kind of got annoyed with her um but I do know reading the rest of the series that she does evolve and grow and I think that's my favorite part of the series as a whole. Overall I do understand that there is a lot of imperfection so in the end I did give this a three out of five stars but I'm very very excited to continue the series. The next amazing book is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. I absolutely adored this book. It is everything it says on the cover. Astonishing, gripping, powerful, impactful, so insanely beautiful. I love this book so much. This follows a guy named Will and his older brother Sean was shot dead and in his neighborhood there are rules where basically if somebody that you love was shot dead you have to get revenge for that person. So this follows Will in a elevator ride technically in 60 seconds. That's what this has been advertised as um, where multiple people come in throughout his life and it's so freaking good. Just the 20 pages alone like had me on the edge of my seat. It was so immersive. The metaphors and references were so good. I love them so much. However, towards the end of the book, I did feel like it was getting a little bit repetitive and a little bit, like it just dragged a little bit, especially the last line. It was kind of disappointing. I understand that this book had to be open-ended. I expected it to be open-ended. However, I felt like the last line was more unclear than open-ended and I just wanted it to be a little bit more concrete. So in the end, I gave this book a four out of five stars. I just needed that little, just a little extra something to make it a five out of five. After the DCG readathon, I read The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang and I love this book so much. This follows a girl named Stella Lane and she has Asperger's, which is a form of autism. And because of her autism, she has trouble in social situations, especially romantic situations. So she hires a guy named Michael to help her out to become good at a relationship. And of course, since this is a romance novel, they form a romance of their own and I absolutely loved this book so much. This was unlike any other adult romance I've ever read about. Usually male romances in other male characters and other adult romances 
are kind of rude and because of her autism or just in general him as a person he was so kind so sweet before he even knew that she had autism he was very respectful of her boundaries and i love that so much in other adult romances there's a lot of miscommunication and in this book because stella has autism and she just speaks her mind and just says whatever she wants to say there is no miscommunication and i love that so freaking much i also loved all the representation of autism and asian culture the vietnamese culture in here was so freaking cool to see i loved it so much and i will definitely be reading any other book helen huang comes out with the next book i am really upset to say that i was really disappointed in it and it is with the fire on high by elizabeth acevedo and i had such high hopes for this book this follows a girl named imoni santiago and she is a teen mom she also takes care of her abuela and she is just in a poor income household and she wants to become a chef however everybody in her life is telling her that she can't be one because it won't sustain her child herself and her abuela I really like the topics addressed in this book. I love that this was a Puerto Rican main character. All of her other main characters have been Dominican and I'm half Puerto Rican just like the main character. So I really resonated with that part of the character. Um, I really liked how she said that when she went outside, either people said that she wasn't fully Hispanic or she wasn't fully black. So she was just kind of stuck in between and she didn't really know who she was at first. And I resonated with that so much because I'm fully Hispanic inside, but because I do understand that I have white privilege, a lot of people were like, oh, you're not fully Hispanic. And it was very frustrating and really nice to see that represented in a book however her life as a whole i couldn't connect with at all i felt like i connected more with elizabeth acevedo's dominican characters than i did her puerto rican character which was so frustrating and overall i felt like the book read very very young and i didn't really like that i didn't feel like we had a rising action or a climax or a falling action it was just very flat to me and so in the end i decided not to rate it because i really liked the representation of hispanic culture but i just i just didn't like it so i don't know another poc rep book that i did not fully like frankly in love by david yoon this follows a guy named frank lee and he is dating a white girl but his parents don't really approve of that so he starts fake dating an asian girl to make his parents happy but then he starts falling for the asian girl that is what it was advertised as that is what i was told however soon i realized that it wasn't about that at all i didn't really feel a connection between either of his r romantic interests um it was more a story about family and i liked that aspect but it wasn't what i was advertised i do really like all the topics that were addressed how anybody can be racist not just white people he was talked about his parents who were korean and they were not only racist towards black and white people but other asian cultures as well such as chinese and japanese culture and that was so cool and interesting to read about um it also talks about white people and how they have white privilege and they get so enraged when you tell them that when it's really not anything to be mad about you it's good to have privilege and so they're just very blind and i loved all the topics that it addressed however overall again this read young it just read super young kind of juvenile and it wasn't what i was expecting so in the end i gave it three stars we are down to the last three, I promise. Third to the last is Punching the Air by Ibi Zoboy and Yusuf Salam. This follows a guy named Amal Shaheed and just at 16 years old, he is convicted of a crime he did not commit. So he turns to his art to kind of try to change the situation. This book is so raw and impactful and so good. I loved it so much. It is told in verse, since I did not say that, and he's very quick. I loved it learning why he was feeling this type of way and how he acted on those feelings at some points of the book i was like amal just stay quiet be like obey be obedient please and then after a while i realized i've never been black and i've never been in this situation before so i can't tell him how to feel his emotions and i just loved all the topics that were addressed in this there were some hijabi characters which brought another level of diversity into this book I mean, of course, it does not need it, but it was really cool to see that aspect. Although, I feel like the one thing I did not like about this book was the characters back home. There were two characters back home, his best friend and a girl back home that he barely even knew. I didn't feel like the romance aspect sort of was needed at all. None of them were well-developed. Neither characters were well-developed, so I felt like if he took out the girl character and put her letters to him from the best friend it would have made a lot more sense and made the book 
well-rounded. I don't know. So in the end, I gave this a 4.5 stars. It is definitely a book that I will be coming back time, coming back to time and time again and recommending time and time again. The second to last book that I read, you guys are going to hate me for, it is Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and I did not like this book. Okay, you know what? I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. And that's not a bad reading. But this is about a girl named Chloe Brown, and she has fibromyalgia, and she also has a near-death experience. And she gets scared that she's just going to live a boring life, so she creates a bucket list, and she recruits this guy named Red to help her out to complete the bucket list. I did not like this book for many reasons. The first reason is the beginning was very, very slow. I'm not the only person that says that, but nothing really happens within the, within the first 100 pages. I did love the connection that her and Red had. That was so freaking cute. And I really love the representation of not only fibromyalgia, but an African-American thick beauty. I love that it had an African-American on the cover as the main character. And I also liked the representation of Red having a toxic ex and an abusive ex and it's interfering with your current relationship because I felt that on a whole different level and I, I don't know I just felt like they didn't really do all that they wanted to do with the bucket list I felt like so much happened yet it nothing happened at all everything that happened was very very underwhelming with how little they did on her list I just expected them to do more stuff outside of it like go see his mom what was his mom in the book for I expected her to go see her I wanted them to go to New York and I wanted to see them go to New York instead of just randomly happening at the end people did not like the conflict at the end I feel like everybody did not like that I really liked the conflict at the end I just wish it didn't happen five pages until the ending um I really resonated with it because Red freaked out because of his like toxic ex and I could connect to that so I really liked the conflict I felt like it was the best conflict in the book however again I did not want it to be five pages close to the end so I gave it a three out of five stars it was okay now the last book I read in December was Wilder Girls by Rory Power and I have a lot of different emotions about this book. All I knew going in was that it was a sci-fi horror story and that it had LGBTQ plus characters and that is all I am going to be telling you guys. The beginning was really really good. I loved the concept of this book and I loved the writing style. The writing style meshed with me very very well and I really really liked the main characters. Um, I don't know if this book needed to be in dual perspective. It didn't bother me at all. I thought it was fine. Um, but what really made me lose all, not all my love, but just a little bit of love for this book was the ending. The payoff for this book and the concept was not good. It made sense what she said, but not really. It really didn't. And I don't, I felt like it was just a cop out and I did not like that. Also, nobody talks about this, or nobody that I have seen talks about this, but the LGBTQ plus romance. It wasn't good. It was just an excuse to advance the plot and have Reese want to go outside of the walls, if that makes, that doesn't make sense to you, but if you know what I'm talking about, it was just, she had to have a reason to go outside the walls, and so her reason was, oh, I'm doing it for you because I love you. But like really the romance, was, there was just one kiss and no, nothing else. I did not like the romance. It was subtle and that's fine. Um, but overall, I gave it a 3.5 stars. I really liked the end and my camera is lagging so bad. So that's it. I'm glad that this is the ending clip. So that was the end of the video. Those were all the books that I read in December. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. Please comment down below and do whatever you want to do. And goodbye.